Hey guys, welcome to yet another awesome video and today we'll be talking on async streams in C Sharp 9.0. Yes, those are very amazing features and we start right now. If you are coming here for the first time, my name is Vineet and if you want to learn more about software development, programming, clean code, DevOps, well, this is the right platform. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. So without wasting any more time, let's straight away dive into the async functions. So guys, async pattern is very useful, but again, it's like a double-edged sword. It can be very dangerous as well if the patterns are not followed uh, correctly. So make sure you know the right thing and watch till the end of this video. Don't miss out any of these specific areas. So basically we are going to talk about three new features that are added recently. So uh, by recently, I mean C Sharp 8.0, which has been some time, but I think like uh, many other people are not using that uh, and it's not in that much practice. And uh, the core reason uh, that I get when discussing with people is like, uh, they're not aware of uh, the uh, patterns on how to use that. And they don't know like actually how to use it. So anyways, let's straight away jump into the solution. Let me quickly start on sole application. Uh All right, so what we have on the screen is the default project. Uh, we have not added anything. So this is the default uh, Visual Studio. We started a console application and we shall be trying to showcase each of the item uh, using uh, some code base uh, because as a developer, you understand better when you actually see the code rather than the theoretical documentation. So let's uh, straight away jump into it. Anyways, so uh, I was also planning to include the best practices around async await that you should generally use in your application. But I was afraid the video length would uh, go beyond time. I mean, like it would be a very lengthy video and sometimes it's not that much friendly to have a very long video. So anyways, guys, just let me know in the comment section if you want to see similar content around uh, like what are the best practices, how you should implement uh, your uh, patterns. Uh, but anyways, for this video, let's straight away jump into it. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is async streams. So before we jump into our code, let's quickly see like how does the actual async stream work? How does uh, this async operations work on the streaming part? So uh, what happens? Uh, let's say we have. So let's say we have a set of collection. Uh, this is a collection that we are trying to use. Now there would be different items in that collection. So let's say this selection is coming from a database, a persistent storage. So what will happen uh, when we try to access it uh, asynchronously or even synchronously as well, even both the operations, what will happen? Uh, we generally write something like task of obj and obj is my let's say class equal to await and then some operation on db set. So, but what happens internally is like this operator, uh, it just waits for the complete task to close before it actually sends that back to my original method. Now, if there are uh, 10,000 records uh, that are there in my collection, so my code will basically first wait for these 10,000 records to be fetched in memory. And then those are actually returned as a combined list or combined collection back to the invoker from where it is coming. And things work a bit different when we actually try to use async streams or uh, I async enumerable. So uh, the technical term over here is I async enumerable. And that's the base interface uh, that we return. So what happens in this way, uh, again, we should be seeing more details in the code uh, once we start executing that. So let's say there are a uh, few records in my collection that the DB has to return. Now each of these item, as they come, they will be moved back to my original invoker. So from where I am awaiting that. So let's say there is a listener that is actually listening to these records. So what happens as soon as the first record comes, it will be sent out there. When the second record comes, it will be sent out again and, and likewise. So I am not waiting over here for the complete record to be fast. And let's say for 10,000 records, uh, there are, it takes uh, five seconds to fetch all those records. So general timeline would be something like this. Uh, let's say my code, it will take five 
seconds to wait and then it will actually start the processing with with a sync stream or iasync enumerable what will happen is let's say it takes again total time would be taken would be around 5 seconds only uh, for the complete operations but even as the records start coming in or start streaming i will be doing the parallel executions at each point of time so this can actually be quite friendly in certain operations where you want to start the processing immediately and i will give one practical use case around that uh, let's say you are on a banking system and in generally what happens in the banking system there are uh, audit histories and uh, trails that are being appended throughout the day and at the end of day these files are reconciled so like what happened uh, some of the legacy systems are there that will just put those files in a shared location or a FTP uh, folder and from there these files are being pulled up or it could, it could be actually any logging system where the logs are being right. So uh, basically what you have to do, let's say there are uh, append only log files uh, with which are in GBs of data and you have to iterate each of these records. Now that could be a significant problem, reason being you would have to read each of these file uh, then when the complete file is loaded there would be a significant cost uh, in reading those files initially and once the files are read then only you would be able to start processing so that can be a bit uh, costly job. And with async enumerable, what you can do is you can uh, start reading the file and as soon as the file stream starts coming in, without actually waiting for the complete file to be read, you can straight away jump into it, start processing, which can be much faster. And uh, sometimes uh, on the way you or how you write the code, this can be pretty uh, useful or less costly in terms of memory and resource utilization as well because you can try to read a set of or a buffer of data and rather than holding the complete objects in memory you can you can read them process them and discard them as well so that's again more of how you actually implement those patterns so it's been some time now let's quickly jump into the actual code and see uh, how the things uh, actually work out and uh, just let me uh, create a few methods over here so first of all let's see uh, if you have to create a standard record or a standard list how will you do that so let me Alright, so this is a very basic code uh, that we have and uh, we are uh, not doing much over here. The only thing is like we are creating a list over here uh, and we are putting in a number from start to end. We are putting those number in the list and returning those. Now to invoke a sort of a artificial delay of processing, we have put a thread or sleep over here with a random operation and random ranges from 500 to 1500 milliseconds. So every time for each iteration, it would be a bit different around that and that can happen. Now you're calling that method from the main method and we are logging the start and end timestamps just to see like how much time does it take for processing of 10 numbers. Yeah, I don't think like we need to write, let me, we can do that, that should not be a problem. So let's try to run this uh, and then we will convert this into a async enumerable and we will see like how much time it takes then. So let's just run this. So by the time the code compiles, if you want to escape or move or revisit any of the sections, the details, uh, the chapters are available in the seed bar that you can move over there. Alright, so I have it on my other screen. Let me pull it over here. So it has started and you can see like it took around 10 seconds for the processing of this message. So let's just try to see, uh, uh, let's just try to run it again and see uh, how much time it takes then. Alright. So it has started on 25 and you see like this screen is uh, like something like it's frozen. There is not much of the interaction that we can do. Process is bit like waits for the execution to complete. And we have it uh, again this time it took around 8 seconds. So now uh, let's quickly convert this code into a async enumerable method and uh, let's see how does that processing happens. One thing to know over here like uh, we cannot process it uh, till the time this method is complete. Now let me just minimize that and I will write it over here. So I have copied the same code this. I will let's modify this. So 
so what we have over here is we have a new method uh, called async enumerable and that is basically an async method which again takes two parameters uh, start and end and the basis of that it tries to it runs over it loop and returns all the numbers now again we have the random so this random would invoke a random set of delays and just like we had it there in our synchronous operation, we have a task dot delay that causes the application to hold for it while it will block it here. The only change or the major change over here is the way we are returning it. So we are not creating a list, putting those number in the uh, list. Rather, what we are doing is basically we are using a yield return. And yield return, what it does, it basically is similar, very similar to how you do an async operation. Uh, it basically returns back. So what happens the first time this loop will execute, it will, whenever it reaches that, uh, it will return to the parent motor from here. Now, whenever the next time we will have these enumerator from my base method, it will again, uh, this method will re-enter and then it will do the execution. And from this point, it will return. So first part, first time it will return two, second time two, three, four, and likewise. So each time it will return bad and, and it will wait for the move next operation on the enumerator. And at that point of time, it will again resume execution. So let's try to quickly see and uh, one quick change over here. So you see like uh, we have added the async operation over here uh, at this point. Now earlier what used to happen is we have to define an async over here as well. Uh, but what happens whenever we write an async, it will, it becomes an async void which is in anti pattern so uh, we don't want to use that uh, because async void is a bit problematic you never know how your application will behave it can lead to some unexpected changes so again for for this part to work uh, the new operation that we have is something async that used to work now we can also use a task over here so that's the main thing so your main methods your static entry points static void main uh, it can be a async task as well all right, so just let me write quickly. So more or less, it's the same code base as we had it before. Uh, earlier it was synchronous. At this point, it is asynchronous and we are processing it. Now let's try to run and see like how much time does it take to actually process this time. So one thing that you might notice is that you are not waiting for a complete return set to be created and then send back. All right, so we have it running. And if you see over here, we are getting the data almost instantly. And uh, as soon as my async enumerable method sends, a, sends an item of a collection back, it is immediately processed. And that's why if you see the more or less the time that you see, that is again in the same range, uh, not much of a change. And that is not expected as well. The reason being, uh, this is an artificial delay that we are creating so it will anyways uh, take that much amount of time uh, but the major thing over here is like the result is like almost instantly available we can process it do it whatever we want so that is something uh, great over here so that's pretty much on async enumerable in terms of implementation uh, the only point that you need to use if you are implementing the async enumerable of any type you would need to use the yield return and then the type and if you are consuming a method, the only thing is the await. That's it. No other change needed. You don't need to change anything else on this application. It will work just flawless. Just add an await over here and then here. All right. There are two more aspects that we should uh, quickly cover. The first part uh, that we generally use is uh, configure await. And the other one is the cancellation token. Sorry, my bad writing, but I hope you get it so uh, what happens if we just put in a cancellation token somewhere at here at this point so what will happen this cancellation token would be sent back to my method at this level so we need a way of pushing that cancellation token inside my iterator so that when my iterator is running it should be aware of that cancellation context and uh, it should not be at a method level and the way we do that that is also pretty simple there are actually multiple options uh, we can do that so first of all let me quickly create a cancellation token that needs to be forwarded so let's call it so we have created the source and now cancellation token source dot 
cancel after and let's call it three seconds all right and then also just uh, let's just try to send this so let's just try to send this method uh, if we just do the ideal way we just put in the translation token and we pass it something like this right so this sorry this so this should work uh, in ideal way and let's try to send this token and see like what happens actually all right so what we have over here is we have created a cancellation token source which is set to its cancel after three seconds we have castrated the cancellation token generated from this source in my method and uh, in the red number async it's pretty standard declaration but if you see we already have a warning in my application and what does it say it says like uh, has one or more parameters type of cancellation token but none is decorated with the enumerator cancellation so this is one attribute uh, that we need to add for our token in order to work properly in line with the context and that we can do simply like this yes uh, let me just position yeah and with that it will work as expected yeah so that is the only thing all right if you don't want to pollute your method arguments or parameter there are other ways as well that we can uh, that you can do uh, we can just pass in over here uh, with the cancellation and that will cascade your consistent token as well so that also accepts this consistent token so that part is done uh, if you need more details i think uh, we can cover it in a at some in some later video or probably you can just google it up it should not be a problem okay let's just quickly see the configure await features as well because we are already running behind time and configure await is pretty simple you just define uh, like the way you normally do you can pass in a configure await as a false or a true whatever values if you find you can define those over here so let me just put it so that you can also see that uh, if you want to check out yeah so this would work we can set a configure await as well if we want so both the aspects are covered so guys i think uh, it's been quite a time uh, for async streams uh, i'll post the details for async disposable which was supposed to be taken in the current video as well but this is getting very lengthy so i'll post that in a separate video coming shortly uh, for now i think that should cover it up well that's it for today i hope you liked the video uh, if you did learn anything new smash that uh, thumbs up button and do let us know Thanks again for watching the video and make sure you follow us and subscribe because uh, there are amazing videos uh, that are coming in and you don't want to miss those. So hit the bell icon and you will get all these notifications straight into your YouTube dashboard. If you have any queries, uh, you want to discuss any of the other point or any point from this uh, video as well, just let us know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and see you next time.